Hello my skeleton friends, welcome to my channel Skeletal Academia. My name is Keith Bui. I'm a freelance artist and a small business owner based in Los Angeles, producing original art and merchandise. If you're interested in my art, the story of inspiration, or just want to hang out with an artist who loves to draw friendly and loving skeletons, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel and my social media. If not, it's totally fine. I still hope you enjoy this video. For today's art process, I painted some fruits using watercolor. I got my art reference from one of my favorite illustration books called Forilegium, The Book of Plants by Basilius Bastler. I will have this book and all of my art supplies information listed in the description. For today's topic of discussion, I would like to share my story about my experience with materialism and materialistic. Disclaimer, the following voice discussion will mention sad childhood story, school bullying, and negative child raising method. Listener discretion is advice. If you want to watch this video without voiceover, I have a link below. So what is materialism? Materialism in psychology can refer to an individual belief that material possession and wealth are central to their well-being and happiness. This perspective can lead to a preoccupation with material wealth and a tendency to prioritize the pursuit of possessions over other aspects of life, such as relationships, experiments, and personal growth. Materialism can influence various aspects of a person's behaviors and attitudes, including their spending habits, social interactions, and sense of self-worth. The term materialistic describes someone who places a high value of material possessions and often judges others based on their wealth and possession. Looking back to when I was a child, I vividly recall yearning for all the toys and clothing influenced by my caregivers, those who I thought of as role models. I'm not sure if it was true, but they always told my sibling and I that they were trendsetters in some communities, and they were some of those people who owned rare things that only wealthy people can possess. Despite the reality of their financial situation, they enjoyed projecting an image of wealthiness within our community. They would say things like, Of course we have to look better than others, or making sure that they know that we come from a rich family. My caregivers often emphasize how our possessions set us apart and elevates us above others, which have contributed to my growing sense of entitlement and comparisons with others when I was younger. On one hand, I was repeatedly told that I could have anything I desired because my family were inherently superior compared to others. Yet, that information clashed with my own observations and experience because my family was not one to spoil us children. I didn't have all the things that sounds like I supposed to have, which led a kid like me to a skilled perception of the world around me. My caregivers would show people that our family have power and wealth because they expected people to treat us better, but the result was completely opposite. Since kindergarten to middle school, classmates would bully me and teachers would make my school life harder for having the quote-unquote wealth that I supposed to have. Then came the private high school where the actual wealthy kids went to. I was bullied for not having enough money to hang out with those wealthy friends. I was so confused, even not having the knowledge of high fashion and technology brands would make me a topic of shame about. Such environments create self-esteem and insecurities. I was constantly comparing my family possessions to those of my peers. I often felt inadequate if I didn't measure up to their material standards. Gladly, at some point, 
I became aware that materialistic was wrong, so I slowly removed myself from it. There's this quote that I really like by Morihei Ueshiba, who was a Japanese martial artist and founder of the martial art of Aikido. He said, when you lose your desire for things that do not matter, you will be free. At its core, the quote suggested that true freedom is achieved by letting go of attachments to things that are ultimately unimportant or trivial. In many spiritual and philosophical traditions, desires and attachments are seen as sources of suffering and bondage. When one becomes fixated on material possessions, social status, or other transient aspects of life, they often find themselves trapped in a cycle of craving and dissatisfaction. By surpassing this desire and recognizing their insignificance, one can attain a state of inner freedom and peace. This freedom arises from a shift of perspective, where one's focus shifts away from external possessions or achievements and towards more meaningful pursuits, such as personal growth, relationships, and spiritual fulfillment. Everyone is free to own and love anything including expensive brands or being in higher positions or having better status. However, the moment it becomes our negative burdens and to then pass it on to others, I believe we should let it go. After years and years of living far away from my materialistic caregivers and practicing gratefulness every day, I was able to not letting myself be swayed by materialism. I constantly remind myself where my true happiness comes from. I have fun drawing the things that I want and thrift the things that I need, coupling my desires with practicality and savings. Even when I buy something for the sake of making myself happy, it is not something that I base mine or other people's value on it. When it comes to fashion and any other products that involve brands and names, I focus on the fundamental design elements as a whole, the craftsmanship, the story within it to make selections, and not about how popular or expensive things are. I want to make sure I have a personal connection to it even if it's just a piece of paper. I surrounded myself with individuals who cherish similar joy, like friends who wouldn't value me based on my positions or my status. When just spending time with each other is good enough. Eventually, I'll let my knowledge, experience, dreams, and wisdom winning over my insecurity.
Sadly, I still see materialistic people online and in real life every day who pass the negative effect of materialism onto others, including their family. And that is actually the reason why I want to share my story. We don't need to feel bad for not having the popular and expensive items if it's not something we really want or are able to afford. You don't need to appear to be wealthy. If somehow you find yourself buying things just to prove your worth, I hope you know that you don't need to. It's not worth it. From my perspective, if you're only acquiring some things because someone else is pressuring you to have it, then it's not truly yours. No matter what, you won't find genuine happiness in it since there is a disconnection between you and the objects because someone else's negative influence is in between. Take a moment to reflect on why you desired certain possessions. Remember, authenticity and self-awareness are the key to find real happiness. Free from the constraints of materialism and external judgment. We reached the end of this video. Thank you for spending your time here watching me paint and hearing my story. If you have something to share, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Also, I'm in the process of making my first illustration book of Skeletal Academia. I'm looking forward to share with you the drawing process and story of inspiration of each illustration. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so we can see each other again. As for now, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye!